Hello students, this video is for week five in the elementary statistics curriculum. We'll be talking about probability and this is the first of a two-part video series about this lecture. We're gonna be talking about pigs and M&Ms and boys and girls, but mostly we'll be talking about probability. The chapter is about probability, which means uh, we'll be talking about all different types of ways of measuring probability and interpreting those probabilities using the empirical method, also known as the experimental method, and the classical method, which is also known as the theoretical method. Using simulation to obtain data, I'm going to show you a couple of different simulators online, and then uh, to recognize and interpret subjective probabilities, which we'll be talking about at the end of the lesson. All right. Uh, probability is a measure between 0 and 1, uh, 0 being an impossible event and 1 being certain, of the likelihood of a random phenomenon or chance behavior. Outcomes, we talk about outcomes being the result of a probability experiment. So the outcome of flipping a coin could be either heads or tails. The outcome of rolling a die could be a 4 or a 6. When we combine those outcomes together, those are called events, which we'll be talking about in a moment. Using the probability applet uh, that I'm going to show you right now, we're going to flip some coins. All right, uh, in this case, I've set it up. Uh, this is at uh, this website here. You can pause the video and copy this down if you'd like. And what we're going to be doing is simulating 100 coin tosses because uh, nobody has time for that. So I'm going to toss all of these coins. And as you can see, the probability changes over time. It, it started off with, uh, with only one uh, heads, but it got lower and lower and lower. And you can see that it's sort of tapering off and, and leveling off here right around uh, 0.5. And then you can tell that the probability of heads and the probability of tails are 0 0.545 uh, and 0 0.55 respectively. They're both pretty close to uh, one half and there's a reason for that. Um, if you were to do that over and over again, if you were to do that not a hundred times, but a thousand times, you would probably get something pretty close to 0 0.5. So there are two different ideas or concepts for probability. Probability in the experimental uh, or empirical way deals with experiments that deal random short-term results or outcomes, like those coin flips. Uh, over time, the long-term proportion with which a certain outcome is observed is the probability of that outcome. So in, for example, in the coin flipping simulation, what was the probability that we had of heads? It was 0.45. So that is the experimental probability of getting heads in that experiment or with that simulation. If we were to do another simulation, we might get something that's similar to this, but not exactly that. So experimental probability can change depending on what the experiment looked like. The law of large numbers is sort of what we saw. I'm going to bring it up one more time. It's sort of what we saw just now while the probability got closer and closer and closer to 0 0.5. You can tell that as we flipped the coin many, many times, the experimental or empirical probability got very close to 0 0.5, which is the uh, which is what we should get, right? Because the probability of getting heads and probability of getting tails is one out of two on a coin. So the prob the proportion with which a certain outcome is observed, like heads, gets closer to the probability of the outcome, the actual probability or the theoretical probability of that outcome. So the law of large numbers simply says. The probability of an experiment, after doing it many times, is going to approach the actual probability. Uh, an experiment, as we talked about uh, before, is anything that can be repeated in which the results are uncertain. So coin flips, card draws, die rolls, etc. And uh, we use the word die here for singular, so one die, two dice, three dice, four dice, etc. The sample space is all of the possible outcomes. So if I was, if I were to list out the sample space of one six-sided die, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the sample space. Those are all the different possible outcomes. And there was a typo here that should say event. An event is any collection of outcomes from a probability experiment. So an outcome is rolling a one on a uh, fair die. An event could be rolling a one. Another event could be rolling an odd number. That's going to be three different possible outcomes in that event. Uh, so since we've collected all of the outcomes together uh, in odd numbers, we can call that an event. Moving on to the next page here. Considering a probability experiment of having two children, not really a probability experiment for many, more like an actual family, identifying the outcomes of the probability experiment is fairly straightforward. Uh, determining the sample space is a little bit more difficult, and defining the event E having one boy exactly one boy is uh, even more challenging. Pause the video, try this out by yourself, and see if you got it right. All right, the outcomes of this sample space, let me move this over a little bit so you can see. Uh, 
one of them is boy boy one of them is boy girl one of them is girl boy and the last one is girl girl we're differentiating between the first one and the second one in this case the boy comes first and is the older child and then the girl comes first which is the younger child and in this case the girl is older and the boy is younger like a younger brother uh, for choice, uh, for section B, I should say, determine the sample space. The sample space is all the different possible outcomes of this probability experiment. There are four different outcomes. Defining the event E, which is having one boy, it's, remember, as I said, it's having only one boy. So it's either boy, girl, the boy is older, or girl, boy, the boy is younger. I'm not including boy, boy, because this is not having exactly one boy. Of course, this is having two boys. So that's why we differentiate between those two. Now we'll take a look at uh, applying those rules of probabilities. Uh, one of the rules of probability is that all the probability measures uh, are between zero and one inclusive. That means the probability of an event or of an outcome could be zero, it could be one, or it could be anything in between. Usually we represent them in terms of either a fraction or a decimal. And the sum of all probabilities of all outcomes of an experiment must equal to one, uh, which should make sense to you because for example, the, the chance of getting heads on a coin is 0 0.5 or 1 out of 2. The probability of getting tails is also 1 out of 2. Add those together, bada bing, bada boom, you got 1. Here's a helpful scale that helps you interpret it and helps you uh, place them in order. Uh, the probabilities go from certain, that's the probability of 1, to likely, the probability of 4 out of 5. Even chance, which is 1 out of 2. Unlikely, which is like rolling a 4 on a 6-sided die. And impossible, which is a 0, like rolling a 7 on a 6-sided die. That would be impossible. Uh, in this probability model, we are given all these different uh, fractions. These fractions represent probabilities. Remember, they're all values between 0 and 1. A uh, bag of peanut M&M uh, candies, they could either be any of these colors. And this table shows us probabilities. We're supposed to verify that it's a probability model. How do we do that? Pause the video and try to think about it. Then come back and see if you got it right. It's a probability model because of two different reasons. Reason number one, all the probabilities are between 0 and 1 inclusive. That means all of these values are between 0 and 1. Um, it, and uh, we don't have any negatives here. We don't have any numbers that are larger than 1. Also, if you take the sum of all of these probabilities, you get 1. Moving on to the next slide here. Uh, this is just more vocabulary. And if, if an event is impossible, the probability is zero. The event is certain or is a certainty, the probability is one. And unusual is the probability uh, is the probability that's low. Now this is not a hard and fast rule. Unusual could be considered like 0 0.1 or 0 0.05. We're just talking about unusual being on the lower end of the probability spectrum. All right, now taking a look at the empirical method here. Empirical or experimental probability is simply pro probability that is based on experiments that you have done already. Empirical, you've already done the experiments. We're trying to figure out what the probability is based on that. So in other words, the relative frequency of any event E is the frequency of it happening in the experiments divided by the number of trials of the experiment. For example, if you were to play Pass the Pigs, which is a super fun game. Pass the Pigs is a game in which you roll two pigs. Uh, they're actual real pigs. If you look back at the beginning of the video, I'm sorry, not actual real pigs. They're obviously fake plastic pigs, but they look like pigs. They're like pig dolls. Anyway, I said pigs a lot, that uh, sentence there. Uh, if you look back at the beginning of the video, there's a picture of past the pigs. Um, and these 52 students rolled the pigs almost 4,000 times and got these results. We can use these results to build a probability model for the way the pig lands. For example, the side with no dot, it came out 1,344 times out of 3,939. So we can figure out a probability based on that. 1344 divided by 3939. So that's what it looks like here. Um, all of these probabilities are calculated based on dividing by 3939. Uh, for choice, I'm um, sorry, for a section B, the probability that a throw results on a side with dot is 0 0.329. We figured that out here. That's whatever the number of side with dot was divided by the total number, which is 3939. If we're doing a thousand throws, we're just going to take this number, which is the probability value, the experimental probability, and multiply it by a thousand because in a thousand throws, this percentage of them, this probability should be um, side with dot, which means 329 should be landing on side with dot. Um, we're looking for unusual, leaning jowl or being unusual for, uh, for the section C. We're, remember, unusual is not a hard and fast term, but it's super low, right? It's lower than any of the other outcomes uh, by far, by a factor of 10. Moving on to interpreting using classical or theoretical method. If we're looking at the theoretical method, this is all uh, 
considering before the uh, thing happens or before the experiment happens. So remember, experimental or empirical probability is all about looking at an experiment and then saying, what happened there? Whereas classical probability is all about what should happen. The number of ways that E, an event, can occur is M. The number of possible outcomes is N. So we do M divided by N. I'm going to show you how that works exactly here. Suppose that uh, we have this fun size bag of M&Ms, again, very delicious, and you have all of these values uh, given to us. What is the probability that it is yellow? Well, the probability that it is yellow before we even take any candies out of the bag is how many yellows there are, six, divided by the total number of candies, which of course is 30. So uh, six divided by 30 is equal to 0 0.2. This is classical probability. If we were to do an experiment on this, first of all, we'd eat all the candy. But second of all, we'd uh, not necessarily always get 0 0.2. It could be that we pick more yellows than we expected or less uh, yellows than we expected. Experimental probability is going to change. Classical probability or theoretical probability will always be the same. The probability that it is blue is very similar. Two blues divided by 30 total, uh, that's 0 0.067. We're able to compare probabilities by converting them to decimals. For example, 6 divided by 30 is 0 0.2. 2 divided by 30 is 0 0.06 repeating. That's that line here, which means that this probability is less likely to occur because this number is smaller. All right, moving on. To use simulation, we already used simulation for coin flipping. Let's do simulation for die rolling. I have that here somewhere. Here we go. Now, if I look at this uh, situation, I have 100 dice and I'm rolling them, uh, I'm, I'm rolling them, well, right now by clicking roll. And look at that, we have all of these dice. Remember from the problem, it was asking us to approximate the probability of rolling a four. This is experimental probability based on a simulation. So the probability of rolling a four is based on these stats. And according to the stats, I rolled a four 18 times out of 100. 18 times out of 100 means 0 0.18. That's uh, about 18%. Uh, how does this compare to the classical probability? Well, the classical probability is 0.16 repeating, so it's a little bit higher than the classical probability. Remember that probabilities for experimental situations are always going to differ in some way. However, the classical probability will always be the same. Let's see what would happen if we do it not a hundred times, but a thousand times. Am I able to do this? Whoa, sure am. Let's see it. I was able to roll a 4 164 times, and uh, 164 times is 0 0.164, which is much closer to 0 0.16 repeating. This is an example of having many more throws being much closer to the theoretical probability. That's an example of the law of large numbers. Moving on to the next section here, subjective probability is kind of like what you see when you look at the weather forecast. The uh, weather person will say, oh, you know, maybe there's a 60% chance of rain today. Well, they say it a little bit more authoritatively than that. They say it's a 60% chance of rain. What does that mean? Well, it's not classical probability because the weatherman doesn't know everything about the scenario. And it's not theoretical probability because the weatherman hasn't really gone out and done experiments on the weather. What the weatherman has done is uh, looked at the past and figure out what's going on in the past. And then looks at weather patterns, weather models on the, on the computer. And then comes up with a subjective probability. Or it's based on his personal or her personal judgment. 20% uh, chance of recession next year. That's not based on experimental or theoretical probability. That's subjective, otherwise known as an educated guess. In this section, uh, Hal Stern, who is apparently a statistician, uh, investigated probabilities and reports that probabilities are based on the amount of horse, uh, uh, amount of money bet on each horse. Is this empirical, classical, or subjective? Well, we don't know everything about the horse. We don't know everything about the track, everything about the diet the horse is eating, et cetera, et cetera, and so forth. We don't even know the weather that's going to happen that day. So this is all going to be subjective because it's based on people's feelings about which horse is going to win the race. It's not based on anything in reality. And the probability rules, we're going to finish out with probability rules um, for disjoint. And when we talk about disjoint events, they're events that have no outcomes in common. For example, A is rolling an odd number, B is rolling a six, a and B are disjoint or mutually exclusive because they don't share any outcomes in common. None of these uh, overlap with these. We can show that with a Venn diagram. In this case, E and F are disjoint because they don't have any overlap. 0, 1, 2 is here, 8, 9 is here, and there's no overlap between the two. It's a weird Venn diagram, but it checks out. We're able to figure out the probability of E or F if the two events are disjoint by simply taking them and adding them together. The probability of E plus the probability of F is going to be 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2 which is equal to 0 0.5. This only works for disjoint events. 
And this is the addition role for disjoint events. That's what I just talked about. Or means either event is a desirable outcome. Either one is okay with us. In this case, this is a probability model. We can verify that it's a probability model because all the probabilities add together to give us one. And we're looking for the probability that a randomly selected housing unit has two or three rooms. Well, two or three is these two. We add them together, and that's our probability.